Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to our Ruzel Live Ambassador demonstration. I'm Carrie Fonte with Ruzel Education. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember, if you've got any comments, questions, thoughts, feedback, type them in the comment section. I will interrupt the Scumbassador when the time is appropriate. We'd love to know where you're watching from, so please share that with us. And um, today's an international version. We have Paul Taylor Clinch joining us from the United Kingdom. Paul's a Scumbassador, but actually, I don't know if you know this, he worked at Scorum. He's a scumbag. So with that, sir, I turn it over to you. Take it away. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for Ruzel for having me again. Uh, last time we had lots of fun, so hopefully this time we will too. Uh, this is going to be super exciting because it's going to be like my first haircut in like four months. Because if you're in or around the UK, you would know that we've been shut since pretty much January. So this is going to be fun for me to do. Um, yeah, like Harry said, please let us know where you're from. We're always interested to know where you're watching from. Uh, and we do really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, today, as you can see, my customer Matt hasn't had a haircut in a very long time. So we're going to give him a bit of a restyle today. Um, we're also going to do a scumbassador tip for the styling at the end. So keep that in mind because uh, we're going to bring back the scumbassador tips with the products. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's give it a go. So I've got a little bit of water in my bottle already. As you know, we use a bit of the old tonic in there. A nice generous squeeze. A couple of reasons I like using it uh, myself is one, obviously, it breaks down products. So primarily, if we have greasers in our shop, people will have a lot of grease in their hair. It's going to break it down so it's easy to comb. But a second reason, which I think is more important almost than actually what this product does, is how it smells. So the way our brain works is we focus on smells and music and sounds as memory. So what we're doing is we're almost triggering that memory of a pleasant experience. For example, if I asked you all to rap a Wu-Tang song off the spot, you probably couldn't do the whole song, right? But if it's playing in the car or on the radio and you're having a listen, you could sing along to the whole thing. So when I say that sounds trigger memories, that's what I'm talking about. So again, I'm just brushing the hair back, looking for some natural guidelines. Obviously, like we said, Matt hasn't had a haircut for an awful long time. And I haven't cut hair for a long time, so we're gonna have some fun. Okay, so we're gonna go for Matt's usual. I haven't even asked him yet, but that's what he's having. <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna go for a hard parted pump. So, there. And the important thing with these haircuts, guys, is they're able to come back. So if I brush all of Matt's hair back, even from the partlet, you see while it's wet, it still all lies down nice and naturally, yeah? I'm not having to fold anything to make it lie down natural. So that's going to be the start. I'm bringing that around his head there. Now on the opposite side, it's just going to be our conventional baseline area. So I'm going to lift the head up. I'm sure if you've seen our videos before, you know our little trick from the lowest point of the hairline across and up. And I'm just folding that down the head to meet our previous combed section. As you can see, it's literally just one movement and then a little bit to touch up. So what you're going to end up with, guys, is you're going to end up with a baseline section that almost looks like this. Yeah? Because this is where the part's going to be and this is its natural baseline for the head. And as you can clearly see here, we've achieved that look. We've come down around the head and we've gone from the natural part, ending on this section. Is there any questions about how we found our lines or how we got to that point? If not, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, Carrie will be sure to let me know. Come on. 
There we go, this lasts forever then. Right, and due to popular demand, we're going to bring back the custom, custom babblers. So, to play safe, because I believe that cutting hair is 70% mindset and then 30% actual technique. So, in that sense, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and reward myself as I move forward within my haircut. So I'm going to find my baseline, and I'm going to use his natural uh, obstetrical bow to start my base. And I'm using the shape of my client's head. So look, that's as high as it can go. If I go 90 degrees, that is it. So I know I can never go too high. So it's a nice place to start there. You can either start on the side or at the back here. But I like it because that way then... It's rewarding as I go. Yeah? Again, so then I can come back here, lift it up, 90 degrees, off it comes. And then I can just tie that in. Because all I'm doing now, setting my base, is I'm just removing the bulk, the hair I know I'm not going to need. Yeah, coming back around to the parted side, exactly the same principle. So, Brad, if you stand behind me, chat. Yeah. And as you can see, coming around here, it's exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the height of the section from the baseline to the part. So, we're going to give Matt, let's go for a bit of a scumbag as opposed to a. Uh, executive look. So all I'm doing is from the behind the ear, where the hair should be even, is I'm then going to come up towards the front, finishing at the front here of this hairline. So you see there, we're going to draw the invisible line and come down here. That is the right length for a scumbag on this client. You wouldn't shave this part off because then the haircut wouldn't look balanced. We're still going across from that angle. Any questions at all on how we got to find where we're going to put our scumbag part in? No questions, but Paul, there was a question about when you put hair tonic in your water, yep. do you, how do you clean the residue, I can't speak, how do you clean the residue from your spray bottle to prevent clogging? Uh, I've never seen that, but have you had clogging? Yeah. The it's just basically where it's been allowed to set too much. What you want to do is you want to make sure you empty your water bottle and rinse it out at the end of every day. Otherwise, you are going to have that build up. So to prevent it, like I said, I'd either rinse it out at the end of every day. Or I'd simply use hot water and a little bit of washing up liquid, shake it, and then that's going to break it down. Thank you. You're more than welcome. So guys, literally, that's our baseline absolutely done. Uh, but because we're going with the pink today, we're going to go with the Rusal pink shears or scissors, depending on where you're from. And all I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to check that baseline. I'm just going to neaten it up, look. Nice. Well, no, thank you so much, guys, for sharing about today's post. I really do appreciate it. Uh, today, uh, my Instagram was going nuts with the amount of people sharing it. So, you know, thank you so much. I know myself and all the guys at Ruzel really appreciate how involved you guys are with it. You've got a lot of good international watchers. We have the United States, the UK, South Africa, Thailand, France. So. Don't forget, everybody, tell us where you're, where you're watching from, where it is that you spread the greasy gospel. Yeah, exactly. We really do appreciate it. All involvement counts. Right, guys, so I've checked my base. As you can see at the back, we've gotten rid of all the bulky hair. We've kept our square shape. So we've just got rid of all of the mess we know we don't need. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come across now from the apex, which is the tallest bone on the head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush that down. I know it's all going to blend because remember, I said that the hair has to be able to lie down before we even cut anything off. And as you can see now at the back, from the apex bone down, it all lies down really well, right? 
So what I want to do is I want to retain the length here, but I want to get rid of the bulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this side, and I'm just going to do diagonal sections and elevate to 90 degrees from my previous cut section, in this case, the baseline. This is going to soften. It's going to reduce the weight without taking off too much length. And again, comb width for part. Diagonal section coming across again, lifting to my previous section. And we'll do one more on this side, just all across. Elevate. And I'm just following that ground. Around? Around. <laughs> <laughs> but how have you all been keeping in the rest of the world? What's lockdown been like for you guys? Are you back to work yet? Are you not able to? Let us know how you guys are coping with it as well. What's your pastime? Have you been practicing on blockheads? And again, guys, I'm just going to repeat this process on the other side. So as you can see, look, if I brush this down, it's a lot lighter, this whole back area. Right, next, what we're going to be doing is using our part on our apex. We're going to be coming up from our baseline, up and around the head. I'm going to start transitioning into the top, or as Rob calls it the cool hair or the style, whichever you want to call it, but we're just going to transition into the top. You can go from the sides and do the fade first, uh, but for me and, you know, scientifically, the women in your life, they notice the style first, yeah? So they see the actual shape. The men see the fade and the technical and all the wee bits, but the women in your life tend to see the shape. So my advice, if you want to get more clients, go for like married guys or guys with girlfriends because the women in their life are going to notice the actual style more. And I'm just going to come right around, saving that fringe, bringing everything else across now. And just like the other sides, we're going to come out to our previous section till we reach the base of the ear. And then we're going to over direct it to ensure length. Bringing out the rest of the hair on top. Over directing to maintain length. without sacrificing the style. So as you can see there, if I push that down here, we follow our baseline, and then we have that asymmetric fringe. But I like rules. I'm one of those boring guys. I like, this works, this is what it is, you do this. I'm a boring guy, I'm not very creative. So I know if everything blends to the ear, I can go as long as I want down here, and if I brush all this back, I know it's going to blend. And as the French say, voila. Next, guys, what I'm going to be doing to ensure our shape is we're just going to do a profile section. I'm going diagonally backwards. So trying to leave as much weight near the part as possible while we sort out where we're going to do. But if you stand that side, mate, the shape we're going to go for, guys, is we're going to accent that front. So I'm going to maintain the length, level off the apex, out at the crown to protect it, 
and then back in to make sure this corner's soft. So again, what we're going to do is come up. I think it was a text message though, but I don't know. And straight across. Out. And back in. All right. I'm going to bring these hairs across. Move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all right, Brad's my apprentice, I'm not being rude to just anyone. And then I'm going to protect that corner, but because I want this to wrap around softer, instead of going really square this side, I'm just going to take out that triangle there. You see that from where we did our profile section to then attaching to our baseline, that little triangle? That's going to soften that corner. Again, triangle, short bit, short bit, protect. Protect, protect. Coming back now. We're going to come straight up from the front. There's our short bit from our profile section. So again, guys, I'm basically, the way I like to work myself is I try and use it as a dot to dot. I'm going almost like a child's book. I'm going, I know I've cut this bit. There's my profile section there, matching. It's dot to dot, guys. It's really not really hard. I'm not trying to reinvent something or push something you know, further than it is. I'm just simply trying to work as simply as possible to eliminate that human error. So instead of having five or six haircuts a day where I feel like, oh, they're amazing. I'm actually, I'm having nine to 10 every day. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to break down it as simple as possible. On the side where the parting is, what I'm doing is I'm coming straight up. I'm not trying to curve it in or over direct it across. I'm just lifting straight up from the parting to keep that weight there and maintain squareness. We're going to check ourselves by bringing everything all up. Right, are we going to the other side, mate? Yeah. Just to do a bit of detail. Yes. And out. All right. Matt is a customer that likes a hard part. So we're going to give him one. Well, these do go on forever, don't they? There we go. All right, so just to triple check that I have it in the right place, that I'm brushing the hair all back, and you can see exactly where that gap is left for the baseline. And remember, like I said, it has to be able to lie down backwards. And as you can see, it lies down beautifully. So we know we've got our part in the right place. It's always best, guys, to check ourselves because you never know at any moment you, you do one step wrong and then you follow that, then the whole thing's wrong. So we're just going to go little bit by little bit, always checking ourselves to make sure we're accurate. I'm inverting the, the trimmer, and the darker the hair, typically the more dense it is to how thick you can actually make the hard part. If it's finer hair, Mousy brown hair, blonde hair, you typically don't really want a thick hard part at all. But in Matt's case, because his hair's a bit thicker, it's darker, you can get away with pushing it that little bit more. Then with your razor blade, don't worry, it is fresh, I did it off camera. I'm just hitting that line. I'm not trying to make it thicker, I'm just hitting that line.
Cool. So what have we done so far? We've done our baseline. We secured the correct position for a scumbag boogie on this client. Because not every client is going to have, sorry, mate, the best hairline in the world. So you can shave it right up to the point because it's not going to look balanced. Uh, we created our baseline on the opposite side. The map, it matches coming through. We reduced the weight at the back without taking out too much length. We asymmetric the fringe so it can bro, blue, blue, brush back nicely. <laughs> we did a profile section to determine the shape of the top. We matched it on this side of our baseline. We took out the corner so that way then it rounds off ever so slightly so it can sit back a lot nicer. On the parted side, we lifted it straight up from the head to create a squared shape coming back. And we just put the hard part in. Whew. Need a cup of tea and a lie down now. Alright guys, so you don't have to work with guards, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna do it. So to start with, I'm gonna go with a number three and I'm just gonna hit my baseline. I'm not gonna push it up. All I'm doing is I'm gonna hit it. And then this is just to unify those lengths. But we've actually, what we've done is we've done the whole style. Have you guys may have experienced it at some point in your lives of cutting or have a haircut yourself where they might do a great fade, a nice haircut, and then you have that wedge in the middle? Because of how we work at Rusal, when we use our baseline first, you're eliminating that. And then because I've cut the style, if this was a shop environment, this whole top section would be about 10 minutes. So really early on in a haircut, your customer's excited. It's going to get an idea of the end result. Because everyone knows what a fade is, right? So I like to do the style first and then concentrate on the fade second. And I don't just say that because I'm terrible at fading, honestly. <laughs> it's true. Even though it's like, you know there's no when the single guys are fading. <laughs> Because guys in a relationship will fade like this, and then single guys do this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to create another baseline, but look, I'm going to follow, this is super important this bit guys, I'm following the angle of my baseline when I create this base with my zero. Yeah? Because for me personally, the biggest thing that I look for in haircuts is a silhouette. If the fade is horizontal, but the hair is coming up and down, then it's creating two different looks. I want it to be one movement. I want it to flow naturally. And then get to our baseline where it's a tad higher. So we're gonna go Again, mimicking the shape we've already created. So I don't have to think, guys. I don't have to think too much. I've already made the shape. I've already made the direction of movement. Today, we've only got time for a haircut. But if you guys are interested in our beard video, we've got some amazing new beard products out, then hit in the comments that you want to see us do a beard video and I'm sure we'll be able to sort that out very soon, especially testing out our new range. I love the beard serum because my beard's pretty fit. Matt has a pretty fit beard. So if you want to see us do a video on our new beard ranges, uh, let us know. Right, guys, so I set in the secondary base now. I'm going to work with my skin fade. So I did a zero on the clipper. Now I'm going in with my skeleton, are these skeleton effects? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but these are my favorite trimmers because they do everything. It's not just about lining out. They're really good for going that extra bit closer before our foils. And then finally the foil. 
I'm using, it's a small area, so I'm just using the single blade, or single foil even, until I get to the back area where I have a bit more room, so I've got a bit more freedom of movement, unlike the EU, unfortunately. All right, so now we're going to actually start a feeling process. So I'm going to start with our parted side, I reckon. Is that better on the old light routers? Is that yeah. Good? All right, so we're going to start here. We have our baseline there for our parted side. We also have a foundation line there for our fade. So again, like I said, I'm not going to go horizontal because that's going to disrupt the movement on here. So I'm going to follow it. I'm going to go do a little bit on his beard because obviously we have to wear masks and everything. And I'm going to go just a smidgen inwards from his sideburn there. And this is my 0 0.5 guard closed. And I'm just mimicking that line across there. Then we've got Babyliss. It's really cool. With Ruzel, we get to work with Babyliss. I find them a great clipper to use because, again, the way I like to work, guys, is I try and eliminate that human error. So instead of guessing on some clippers, I'll hunch if I opened it a little bit, a little bit more. I'm just going to do two clicks. One, two. Go just underneath that 0 0.5. And if you notice, I'm only doing almost a quarter of the head at a time because, again, I'm not focusing on that area. I don't need to think about it. I just need to focus on this bit now. So I'm reducing the amount of stress that I'm putting on myself as I work. Then we're going to close it down to one click or a quarter open. I'm going just underneath that, guys. And then finally closed. Right, so now we've gone from skin to a half. How's it looking? Yeah, look jolly good. <laughs> jolly good. Then I'm going to come up with my number one guard, guys. Also, I know I'm looking rather casual today, but it's because it is Black Sales, which is my shop. It is its birthday in two weeks, and it's going to be two years old. So I thought I'd wear a Black Sales t-shirt today. So again, with my one, going up about half an inch. And we're going to blend down the same way that we did with our 0 0.5. So now I'm going to go two clicks on my 0 0.5 guard. One click. Closed. All right, now we've gone from a one down to skin. Again, guys, so by working up to come down, I'm protecting myself, so I'm never going too high. I'm always clearing myself before I can move on. Goes right back into the essence of rewarding myself as I go. Now I'm gonna work down from the actual blend, and if you remember, the first thing I did clipper-wise was I put a number three on. So logically, the next possible shortest thing it can be is a two and a half, right? Again, I'm just going down just underneath my base, then too close. Then the 1.5 guard all the way open. And again, guys, I'm always working just underneath where I left off. One and a half bar closed. And as you can see, it's already starting to come to life. So 
So you could say I'm working in a precision way by always calculating the same system as my fade work, but I'm doing it in a way that allows me to eliminate as much human error as possible with my work. My, then I've got my one guard all the way open. Half open, or two clips again, guys. One click. Close. And now we can do some refining and work down. So it's worth saying, instead of just guessing, if I see some dark areas, instead of just guessing whereabouts I'm going to go, I'm going to work down to play safe. Make sure I'm always in control of what I'm doing. That way then, the question I get asked a lot usually is when I'm fortunate enough to do hair shows, do I ever get nervous? And the answer is no, because I'm working always in control. It doesn't matter if there's nobody watching me, Brad watching me, or you guys at home in various different countries around the world. If the system doesn't change, you just got to believe in your own ability. And by doing that baseline, that's securing the foundation for the whole haircut. So the way we like to work is it's very simple. It's not necessarily the best way or anything like that, but it works. You would have heard us say that a lot in our previous videos. Well, that's because it's true. And as you see, right, cool. I'm happy with that section. Looking good. Let's go to this panel here. So what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I'm focusing my eyes only here. My peripheral vision can't see around this corner here. I can only see what's in front of me. So over there, I'm not bothered about. It doesn't exist to me yet. So by that rewarding myself as I go, I'm staying completely in control. Any questions, guys? Anyone lost? Anyone have any comments on systems or anything like that? How Got a lot, of, a lot of compliments. So um, Cut is looking great. Love the shape. Tracy Amaralis says, congratulations on your two-year anniversary. Um, everybody's with you, Paul, doing a terrific job. Thank you. Awesome stuff. So, guys, we did our 0.5. Then I went down. Now I've got my number one guard. And again, look, I'm following the shape of my head. I'm, shot, I'm following the shape of my baseline. It's another reason why it's so important, even with fade work, is that it, set, it really does set the base for the whole head. Not just the style on top or the cool hair, but it actually sets a precedence for the fade, what angles I'm going to use. Uh, what's the silhouette going to look like with the fade on it? Is it going to line up together? And again, guys, now we're back down to blending down from our number three, my two and a half. And I'm going just underneath that, guys. Once again, I do really want to say a big thank you to uh, Carrie and the rest of the Rusal team for having me on today. Giving me a chance to dust off the old cobwebs. And obviously my model Matt today. So cheers, chap. We're always happy to have you, Paul. Thank you. And again, guys, this side, the whole back area, I'm not really going to explain the system. I'm going to repeat it when I get back to the uh, other side here. Just so I can show you it in real time, in an actual, say, shop environment. But please keep those comments coming. Please keep those questions coming. Uh, also, if you want to have a lovely T-shirt like this, let us know. Hey, nothing wrong with a bit of self-promo. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want some custom American clippers, I know a guy. Well, it's a girl, but I know a redhead. <laughs> you like that one, huh? Right, 
obviously we're stretching out the indents of this head shape just to make sure we can get that fade as seamless as possible. Brad, if you come here, mate, you zoom in on that there. So you see, nice and seamless coming to our baseline. So we've got some little work to do. Right, next, moving on, guys. I'm now going to do this corner of the head. Again, I'm going to refine and blend into this section as I move around. But again, as I get to this corner, that I'm raising it up, following that angle from my baseline. It's so important, guys, that you follow these angles. I've seen a lot of it myself where on Instagram or Facebook, people do an amazing haircut. Like absolutely amazing, but the silhouette's totally conflicting. It's totally going against each other. So try and keep in mind that whatever shape your hair on top is doing, the fade needs to mimic that. Otherwise you've got two contradictory movements in the hair. And like I said, usually when uh, I get the opportunity to do these things, I try and let you guys pick the products. But I'm going to show you a Scumbassador tip today. And so, no. <laughs> then blend down. So it's going to be a really cool one, honestly. The only hint that I can give you is that it's going to be using one of the first products we brought out. So if you know which is the first two products we brought out, put in the comments and maybe you're going to be right. Do you want to give them any kind of a hint or you're just going to let them guess? I'll give them a hint. It's got a pig on the tin. <laughs> Very <laughs> helpful. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> now it's gonna be uh now it's a good little trick i love doing it it's how i got matt to uh buy sorry to say it chat but matt <laughs> actually buys different sets of our range because of this observation on how it adapts in the hair and how it looks paul yes ma'am uh, Christopher, oh Christopher, I want to say it right. Venegas, he says, looking great. Where can I order a t-shirt like that? Uh, if you message me on Instagram, that is Pirate Paulus, uh, then let us know and uh, yeah, I'll post one out. Let us know and uh, yeah, I'll check how much the shipping cost is. But any support would be amazing because uh, right now in the UK, like I said, we haven't actually been able to work. So this is my first haircut in a long time. So if I'm a bit rusty, please bear with. But to me, it's starting to really come together. And we're on our last section now here, guys. So I'll explain the system one more time, just while we do this bit, because I think I'm doing all right on time, which is rare. So I'm mimicking the baseline. Yeah, two clicks on our Babylon's Clippers. Going just underneath where I'm at with the 0 0.5 guard closed. One click, going just underneath that. Closed. Right, this is assured now, guys. We've actually gone from a 0 0.5 down to skin. Yeah, so I'm rewarding myself as I go. Next, I'm using my one guard. Just set another line, then two clicks on my 0 
just to blend that out. So like I said, guys, this isn't the most complicated system or the most fancy one to watch, but it works. It saves me a lot, believe me. Then one click after I've done two clicks of the 0 0.5, and then closed. 0 0.5 all the way closed. What we've done now, guys, is we've gone from a number one down to skin. Right, we're going to concentrate on the blend now, going down from our uh, baseline area to our fade. The reason I call it uh, the blend down is because when you fade, the hairs are so short that the hairs appear horizontal, right? So that's the fading process. The blend is where the hairs are actually able to lay down so it makes it look fuller. So we fade up to our number one and then we blend down. So again, 2.5 all the way open, 2.5 all the way closed. Juggling the masks as you go, guys. Also, well that. So if you guys haven't seen that, that's a good little tip. If, uh, if you're struggling with the masks on your customers, if you spin it around the ear lip, it's still locked in place and I'm able to fade and move the ear without affecting that mask at all. So you're not constantly putting it back on or oh, it's falling down. Yeah, it's giving us a lot more freedom of movement. Got my one gun all the way open now, just to finalize that transition. And like I said, guys, I don't fade amazing at the best of times, so four months off, I don't think we're doing too bad today. Half open with our number one. And close. Right, we're going to refine that. So again, so just guessing where some dark spots are, seeing like, oh, I think that might be a one or anything like that, and just having a bit of a guess. Uh, I'm going to start from the blend down to refine. That way then I'm staying in control of what I'm doing, and I'm not going to create another line or mess something up. Yeah, I'm trying to work as safely as I can and eliminate that human error. So two open. Too closed. One and a half open. One and a half closed. And that's what I'm going to do, apart from maybe the one all the way open. And then the rest we'll do with scissor over comb, clipper over comb, and of course, our Rusal blending scissors. It's looking great, Paul. We're, we're coming into the home stretch now. So we're really enjoying, we're really enjoying your presentation today. Awesome. Right, guys, so I'm just going to line them up. I'm just following the line. I'm not trying to make them a new one or anything like that. I'm just following. So I'm going from the corner there. Got my start. Go for my skin. I'm just following that around. Yeah. On this side. Again, if you've joined us late, guys, that's no problem. The key factor with the scumbag movie that I'm going to explain to everybody again, because it's such an important part that people miss sometimes. So. The actual part of a scumbag has to go in line with the lowest point of the hairline. On our posters, if you show them the scumbag movie poster, you'll see that it's perfectly in line with the front of his hair. Not everyone has a lovely hairline on that chap, so you never make it shaving off that front part for a scumbag movie. It just follows in line. 
That way there, you're ensuring the haircut looks balanced. And guys, believe me, in the classic haircut, that is the most important thing. So I'm refining the haircut. Using my score on 6.5s. Just softening that transition of my baseline. And if you notice, I don't have to dry it and check anything because the top, I cut it so it all falls down nice and natural. Even with nothing in it. So as much as I love Rusal, and I'll probably get told off for this, but look, it doesn't need product. You can wake up in the morning, it's done. Yeah, we want to try and make it as easy for our customers as possible. But I am going to use product because obviously this is a Rusal video. <laughs> So we'll start with our grooming spray. This has a 70% consistency of our grooming tonic. And uh, the main factor is, if you look, there's no mess. I'm not dribbling it on my hand to create a mess. This is especially good if you're a unisex shop or salon, and you're working with women's hair as well. Blow drying. <laughs> There it is. Right, guys, the first thing I'm going to do is secure the plug being turned on. <laughs> Always important, guys and girls, remember those plugs. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is secure the part. So, medium heat. I'm going to set this in. I'm not going to go so it's bone dry. I'm just setting that part in. That's all I'm going to do. That is it. That's all I'm going to do. Not because I'm done, but because this is going to bring us to our ambassador tip for the day. So, red bruisal. We brought the red and the green out at the same time, right? But red in a water-based product in the rain is going to get dripped on. It's going to fall. It's not going to be as nice, right? The consistency is not going to hold up. But if you're a greaser in the summer, then you use our bruisal green, then that's going to flop because it's a grease part, right? So, by putting the red bruisal in damp hair and blow drying it in, it's going to break down the product just enough that it's going to make it behave as a grease. It's going to make it more malleable, it's going to have more movement in the hair. So it's just going to make it a bit more free flowing rather than like a water base where it typically goes slightly harder. It's just going to make it a lot more basically like a grease. And if you haven't tried that, I suggest you do. Give it a go, let us know what you think. And if you have tried it before, let us know in the comments and tell us your experiences from that. So again, we secured our part, just a little bit of dry. I've not got a towel, but I've got some jeans. <laughs> That's all right, bro. Right, back to blow drying. So I've put the red in. And as you can see, it's quite, it holds in place, whereas I want it to be a lot more malleable, a lot more bendable within the hair. So we're gonna heat it right up and break it down. Again, securing my part first. As you can see, it's breaking the product down, but it's keeping the shine exceptionally well. 
And I don't know how it works or why it works, but again, I just know that it does. So keep working through that hair, drying the product into it, breaking that product down with the heat, Then reach to end as if we would any other haircut. Blending scissors, blending shears, scissors, wherever you are in the world, call it whatever you like. So we've got a few minutes left, so I'm not going to line them out with a razor, but you get the idea. We've done the style first, after our baseline. And if you see, our Rusal blending scissors, they have this amazing curved edge from Mitsutani that allows me to chop into the hair do some slicing, but with a safety pin. My risk to reward is a lot better by using our curved blending scissors just to soften those transitions. If you've got any questions about our blending scissors, these ones have lasted me for four years. Fun fact, I was the left-handed prototype tester and I've still got my original ones. So, as you can see, they're slicing through the hair with no pull, no effort at all. Chip into the fade as well, look. So we talk about our products being versatile, so are our scissors. And again guys, I'm not just chopping randomly, my goal is to accent the front. So by accenting the front, I'm reducing the weight everywhere else, which is why it can appear that I'm able to go a bit more chop heavy or a bit more freedom of movement, because the goal is to maintain the front. I'm trying to maintain that roundness and soften everything else around it. Therefore, it might appear that I'm just going full hog, but all I'm doing is softening all the area around the head. I'm going to use a smidgen. A smidgen, that's a technical word. That means that much. A smidgen more. Yeah, just to secure my part, baseline. And we're going to blow out all of those loose ones. Again, no towel, but I got my jeans. So let's get rid of all of the loose hairs. With our afro picks. Again, guys, I'm going to start with the part. I'm going to use my palm of my hand to set the hair. And as you can see, what that's doing is it's going to smoothen it down. So start on the part like everything else, then the opposite side, and then lastly, the front. I'm 
surprised you say that side chat. Yeah. I'm going to show you one last little trick while we're here. Just while we're here for the lols. I'm going to use my fade brush. And you see those little gaps within the hair? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delicately just brush those brush lines together. That's going to really soften that transition. Ever so softly. All right, that, <laughs> stay there, brothers. Thank ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. That has been our Scumbag Boogie. Uh, I've been Pirate Paulus. Make sure you give us a follow on the old Instagram and all of that. A uh, huge thank you to Carrie and the rest of the Roosel team for having me today. And thank you to you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, thank you so much for all the shares and everything and tuning in and for wishing the shop a happy birthday. But yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and in keeping well and safe during this lockdown. We've lost too many people at the minute uh, of our friends and family members. So please check in on each other. And uh, that's my message and take care. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for everyone watching. I just want to give you a, Paul, go back and do me a favor when you're done. Look at all these comments because there's a lot of love for you. One of my favorites is from Brooklyn. He says, it's like listening to John Lennon teach hair. Totally fab. So, oh, I'll take that. <laughs> and then please take a picture of your model and we'll post the picture next to this video. Yeah. And I just want to remind everyone next week, we aren't going to be here on Facebook. We're going to be on Instagram instead. Watch for our advertisements. We will be on our South African distributor partners page. And it's an interview live with Lane and Burtis. You won't want to miss it. So Paul, again, that looks spectacular. Thank you to you, Thank your you. model, your assistant. Thank you to everybody watching. We'll see you on Instagram with Lane and Burtis next week. Be well, stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.